already here in Kursag, so we owe a lot to Kursag, and I would like to pass the word to Mr. Mayer, who will deliver a kind of introductory speech. Mr. Professor, thank you for the appreciative words um, to us, to the city, to the municipality, and we do hope that in the future uh, we will um, receive similarly nice words from you. I can, I will pr promise that we will do our utmost to to be introduced like that. I'm. Uh, it is my honor to welcome you to the conference organized by the Institute of Advanced Studies uh, at this conference uh, organized uh, to pay tribute to Elamir Hankish, and I'm very happy to see so many of you here. I was very proud when I took a look at the program first, the program of the conference, and, uh, and I was happy to realize that this science has a very broad spectrum and how notable guests we have today. Uh, and I was happy to say that they are trying to answer the questions that Elamir left behind for us to answer. I am absolutely positive uh, that uh, if uh, Elamir Honkish uh, was in the position to see the conference, he would be immensely happy. He would be very happy that the seeds of thought that he left behind uh, are now growing. I'm also happy that everybody wants to find find a suitable answer to the questions that he left for us. Uh, anybody who knew him, and many, many of you did, um, curiosity was something at the core of his character. He was walking around with open eyes. He was listening to others. He was a playful person. He was uh, mischievous. He was a vibrating character who talked to us in a very natural voice. Um, privileged to have um, the honor to, 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 to have known him, and I was touched by his personality. In every word that he said, in every movement he made, he was a very natural uh, uh, people, really a down-to-earth person, um, and in, in such an inhumane world, it's something fantastic, and uh, I'm very happy that I could know him. He was a uh, a lovable person, a friendly person. I'm sure everybody knows that and remembers that. When I got to to when I met him first, I had the feeling that we had had been acquaintances for a long time. I think people opened up very easily for him, including myself. He could speak to people, no matter where these people came from, whether it was a professor or just a simple man of the street. If you, when you uh, met him, uh, you knew that he was asking questions all the time, and we had no time to uh, to ask questions from him. Uh, we can be grateful. We could be grateful because he paid great respect to the town of Gusak, and he did a lot. When I think about him and when I take a look around in the room, I think we can say that he has completed his mission. He uh, managed to uh, sow the seed uh, of curiosity in us, in young people, in, in, in other people, and I'm sure that everybody enjoys. We should walk similar, with similarly open eyes in our world. We should talk to people, ask questions, try to look at things around around us. We should keep the flame of a child, child, a child's curiosity. So allow me to quote probably one of his most well-known uh, ideas, or an opinion of himself. Yes, I'm lost. I'm looking for something new something that is still in the shadows, something that could be essential, something alive, something more that I know and I'm familiar with today. I'm wondering, I'm loitering, and I'm playing. I do not believe in things. I'm not haughty enough to believe that I have found the truth. And I'm not anxious to know or to think that I'm trying to get to hold on to something that I find to be uh, solid, that I have once grabbed. I'm sure 
that this concept will be a good basis for the conference and you should not hold on to uh, a safe um, uh, level that you think you're, uh, that will take you to the future. Uh, and as uh, in my capacity as the mayor of Kursag, I hope that you will get to know the town to the same depth as Eleanor did. You are always welcome uh, to visit the town of Kursag to anybody who, who is interested in the town and if you follow in the footsteps of Alamir, you will also learn to like the town. I'm sure in the corner, it, it could have will stay in the corner of your heart. And with this hope, I would like to wish you an uh, enjoyable and beneficial conference and a good stay in Kursag. Thank you. I would like to give you a little bit of an introduction to the workshop that we experienced back then, 20 years ago, 15, 10 years ago, we actually put down on paper a lot of things that we could not realize. There were lots of new starts. Uh, we invented and then reinvented things along with Elamir, and one of my wonderful friends, who was also a good friend of Elamir, family, because of a family uh, problem, he had to stay, uh, but he left, uh, he sent me uh, his, his text and allowed me to read some excerpts of it. So, to the memory of Elamir Hankish, we are now remembering a scientist and a thinker who was looking for the truth during all kinds of social explosions and transitions and changes. He retained the freedom of his spirit, uh, consequences, and depth. He finally got to the truth, but he didn't do this in order to become wealthy or powerful. It might be a good feeling for those who were friends of his because we could understand each other. It was a wonderful time that we spent at the Institute of Sociology. We always found uh, a shared root and we always uh, valued and honored the others. First, he uh, dealt with literature and then with social issues, but then he arrived uh, in the sphere of philosophy. And from literature, he transferred his interest to, uh, in society. In 1985, he um, developed the concept of two Hungaries. In this concept, he summarized theories um, which were developed by a very a large number of uh, famous Hungarians, including the poet Berzsenyi, the politi politician Széchenyi, uh, and Kossuth. And um, he sort of described a kind of personal truth. He said that every nation has a kind of capitalism as its feudalism was. But Elamir did not just put down statements, he wanted to take action as well. He wanted to change the public mindset. And later, after the transition into democracy, this is why he announced and introduced uh, the, the, the movement of Let's Invent Hungary. He was not perfectly understood, and he extended this concept to the whole world. And his dual civil feudalistic society was uncertainty itself. That's what he thought. So he divided the world into periphery and semi-periphery, and obviously Hungary belongs to the latter. And for a time, it seemed that this uncertainty uh, was um, alive only on the semi-periphery. But in the modern times, it has changed, and the new development sort of shake, uh, shook the, the half periphery and the center as well. So what happened? I used to uh, describe this as the change of the whole state of the world. It was a. Uh, uh, invented by Aristotle, and the, the, the phrase itself was written down by Hegel. Um, there were two concepts uh, in the prehistoric society. There were two Latin terms, fusis and nonus, 
them to other concepts uh, described by Spinoza and Rousseau. Again, another dual concept was feudalism and capitalism, and folk and urban society and Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft, these two dual concepts were typical. But afterwards, after the first such state of world, um, the, the first revolution was the invention of fire. And as Aristotle said, this will only change when spindles weave by themselves. That was the second revolution by Prometheus. And there were new uh, ideas introduced under the same concept, but with same name, with similar, different names, sorry, new capitalism, tourable capitalism, post-industrialism, and so on and so forth. Um, this concept or this process is neatly described in a book by Judy Jensen, and she talks about hybridization, but even more professionally, she calls it, she terms it as K-ordination to unite chaos and order in the same concept. This K-ordination makes an opportunity to make sure that the wealth is transferred to everybody, but it also describes the obstacles that hinder this process. What I would like to add is now we are in a position, in a situation where we have no friends, we have no uh, mates and fellows around us. Um, in the current state of the world, we are in love with democracy and we are also in love with autocracy. We are married to the former and we are in love with the latter. And it was due to Elamir Hankish that, at the same time with the Western philosophers, he realized that we have come to the age of uncertainty and we don't know how to go on. Ferenc Mislibet agreed with this and he published a book with the title The Original uh, Accumulation of Crisis. And this is why Elamir decided to turn to philosophy, because he believed that with the, uh, the, the simple words of crisis and, and economy, uh, the processes cannot be described. So he was looking for certainty. He was looking for 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 something, uh, but he simply realized that we are at a point, at a stage where, where where you need to find a balance between certainty and uncertainty. It's an ingenious book. Another um, proof of Elamir's value. We have lots of uh, social scientists here. But in some, I would like to say that in the past 40 years, he was one of the greatest spirit in the field of social sciences. He was the one who could talk about fantastically comprehensive issues. But uh, he was, he did not receive the uh, attention that he would have received. So it's up to us that we continue his work. Ivan Vitani. Now, just very briefly, I would like to share show a PowerPoint presentation, a few slides, which was actually presented in 2006 in Brussels, one of our uh, experiments, because our idea to set up a new uh, university in Kursag, a new research center, we wanted to share this in idea with the world, and Elamir actually put together this PowerPoint presentation in which he summarized uh, all of our uh, uh, ideas and endeavors. I don't want to give you the detailed version, but just to give you a short, a brief insight into the, the work we were doing at the time and also the work that we never actually abandoned. Ora et labora, study. This is how it starts. Participate and act. So basically this is the beliefs of an activist, a social scientist. And here, actually, he puts down the fields of the research beyond uh, the uh, traditional disciplines, uh, also talks about the role of culture and civilization. But at the time, also, he thought merited attention and research. And even at the time, we were of the view that the Western civilization is undergoing a deep transformation. 
that was about 11 or 12 years ago, actually. So here are, here are the uh, questions, decline, crisis, de-civilization, hybridization, creolization, beyond good and evil, hedonistic world. Uh, one of the important issues of for Elamir that he uh, actually discussed and, and uh, researched up to his death, and I think one of his latest uh, uh, lectures that uh, he gave here, nearby, when um, all of us sitting around him, and that was before Christmas, and kept asking, have we become better people uh, throughout the, the year that we spent in Kursag? And I'm about to ask my colleagues, actually, uh, the same question. Actually, do our lives have a goal uh, or a sense? And then these questions he put forward in such a way that uh, you can't shake these off, actually. So that was a very exciting mixture of wisdom and knowledge that he created. Also, one of his very interesting issues that he raised was the loss of transcendence and the loss of meaning, the meaning of life, and the collapse of great narratives. And I could go on. Actually, I don't want to uh, go into detail. We were all very interested uh, in whether after a period of deconstruction there is a, is there a period of reconstruction. So uh, can we see a new European construction and with what means and instruments? Is there a possible uh, uh, synthesis between traditional and emerging new uh, attitudes and values and norms of conduct and mentalities or life strategies. So what kind of mentalities are characterizing these uh, life strategies? What are our visions of the world? We uh, thought very highly of these issues and he always stressed that in every field of life, you have to be able to answer these questions uh, in politics, in uh, government, in uh, science, uh, in social studies, etc. One of uh, his favorite comparisons was actually uh, just to, to look at the messages uh, from the Bible, the Ten Commandments, and uh, today's values. So the, it speaks for itself, actually. So be modest in comparison to be successful or uh, discipline yourself, enjoy yourself, save, be thrifty consume versus consume. And he very uh, uh, descriptively was able to, to put this uh, in comparison. And all this actually suggested to be included in the topics and the uh, curriculum of a new university. So let's just move beyond the usual uh, disciplines and, and discuss these issues as politologists, um, economists, philosophers, etc. He was very knowledgeable on images, uh, uh, the comparison of all the new images, just to illustrate what uh, I showed you before, so what, what we were like and what we've become. This on the left is a, a, a modest <coughs> drawing of a, a car from the early 20th century uh, compared to a modern car. He also talked a lot about uh, super individualism, almost like a religiousness of egoism. He, uh, for example, it very successfully illustrated with uh, images taken from uh, promotional m marketing materials, adverts. So the final victory of individualism and the cult of the human personality, the myth of the self, also celebs who are new uh, goddess and goddesses. Here are the new goddesses and gods. And mm, I kind of feel a bit nostalgic because uh, many of summer universities we spent discussing these topics and showing and, uh, and, and talking about these images that he selected for these uh, presentations. So the first uh, on the left says, I can uh, quit everything apart from Bijou. 
uh, the, the jewels that he's wearing. So they, these images spe speak for themselves. Also for him, the loss of the framework uh, uh, was an important issue. So we used to have God, we used to have history, society, and the individuals, and these frameworks now shattered. That is why we feel so uncertain among other things. Also, the relationship between these uh, elements uh, has changed. Probably, as you could see on the slide as well, the individual, the individual uh, has become uh, the strongest. And let me just skip a few slides here and just move on to what already has been mentioned. So we have actually roles, set roles in life, reinventing a country. And as Ivan Vitani also mentioned, it, uh, this was not very successful. All politicians laughed at us, all the parties, political parties, said, uh, laughing, said that even uh, St. Stephen came up with this. So why do we have to reinvent it again? And the, the media ignored it or even ridiculed it. And uh, after many a discussion, we came to the conclusion that we have to enlarge and expand this idea. And just to finish, we came to the idea that let's invent or reinvent, reinvent Central Europe, which was an interactive website, which initially Elamir was not really supportive of, but in the end he was the most loyal and enthusiastic and it actually started different topics, for example, on this website entitled I Had Enough or We Had Enough, and that was the title of it, and actually things that you had enough of were acts of the police, etc., and you could include it here. And interestingly, we thought nobody would be bothered, apart from a few students or friends. And then uh, illustrious and famous personalities. Uh, Michael Lane, for example, uh, was uh, Thomas Glazer, who were uh, EU ambassadors, also Philip Schmidt, uh, social scientist here with us, Philip, maybe if he wakes up. <laughs> He's mentioned. <laughs> there you go. So this this was on the move. It was uh, moving. It was alive. We published short articles. Others also came to publish here. And also there was a business uh, uh, group. I think it was Carpathia uh, uh, Foundation who uh, supported it, financed it. Um, fortunately. Uh, we couldn't become uh, Soros support, uh, receive Soros support, uh, uh, so we uh, had to discontinue this website. But uh, based on yesterday's and previous experiences, I think we have to go back from the Gutenberg galaxies to the Zuckerberg galaxies. So, okay, we take hard copy books to bed with us, but actually uh, we had a long discussion about Eastern Europe uh, in, uh, in English. Actually, thinking about the traditional workshop that we, that is very necessary and it's important to see face-to-face, uh, -face argue, disagree even, but we see each other, we feel each other's presence, we see each other's body language, the importance of that. How can we link that to a much um, mm, sort of uh, different or remote uh, kind of uh, environment. Uh, the Creative Town, for example, that we came up with, uh, which uh, uh, was supported by the government. And here, Kursag, uh, within a craft project, started the Creative Town uh, project which is not only just a few buildings given back to town, like this one, this has such a brilliant atmosphere, but anybody who comes in here can learn uh, what they're seeing, because uh, uh, the problem with these cities usually, okay, we visit them, we take a walk, we have a glass of wine or eat something, but there's no signs, we don't know what we're seeing. But if we can stop in front of uh, a house or a building, and uh, we have a mobile app, for example, in five languages, that gives us explanations and information, that's completely different. So that's the concept for the future university. Also, university should 
be uh, thinking outside of the box or actually physically jump outside of the box. So just to uh, shot a couple of thousand people in uh, uh, in a campus, that's not enough. We have to communicate knowledge to a much wider audience. And this is, as we say uh, in English, outdated. I'm sure that uh, it's not just a matter of will, let's share knowledge. No. Uh, the publications that we care for and love take ages to to publish, edit. But the technology provides much faster access. Yesterday, for example, we had the the uh, talk, but it was already screened uh, live, streamed live, whereas a publication to sum up uh, the lectures would take uh, months or years to prepare. So actually, uh, now, since uh, some people cancelled their presentation, we now have more time, which is a positive thing. So now, thank you.